It's showtime. Hello everyone and welcome to the SCPL New Year, New SCPL so the Healing Frequency is open. Thank you, Jenna, for the host. And uh, welcome once again, Rapid. Uh, yeah, it's good to be back, Kix. It's a, a whole new year. I can't believe it's been one whole year since we have cast. It's a long time, yeah. and I know that during that time, you were making lots of interest off of, off of investing the money from the STPL prize pool, but we caught you yeah. and we we're back again. And eventually, we'll force you to give that away to the people playing in this <laughs> turn. Yeah, the, the money run out, so uh, the break ends, I come back with some, uh, <laughs> with some more stuff. Uh, but basically, obviously we're 2019 now, we're nine months into the STPL, there's probably about two or three months left of Season 1, and it's been kind of crazy. So we started up March last year, which just seems like an absolute age ago, and now we're here, January 2019. I've made a few more things, there's a few things I've made around 4, which I can't show off yet as well, but uh, hopefully the new stuff I've made... Wait, what, do you mean, what do you mean you can't show them off yet? Like, are you not allowing yourself to? They're, they're, they're like round 4 things, so they wouldn't make sense uh, to show ah, them now, okay. because like, uh, well, a lot of them I need to render as well, for like 2 hours to render the video, so it's not all good. But, uh, I mean, we're here, so let's introduce our first match of today. It's going to be Netwars versus the M. Uh, as you can see now, we do have head-to-head -head stats, and apparently I didn't fix the Terran Zerg on Protoss stats, but we'll sort that out later, it's all good. Uh, but Netwars have been killing it, 15 wins overall in the SCPL, and I uh, mean 2-0 against the M. They did meet in the Round 1 semi-finals, uh, where... No, they didn't. They met in the Round 1 <laughs> third, fourth place match, where Netwars won, so the M got fourth in Round 1. Uh, but just have a look at how these teams got here. Looking at Netwars match history, you can see uh, since their loss against White Clan in the finals, they played against BWL, 4 0 them Clan Revolution, 4 0 them Psystorm, 3 1 Red. Uh, one of the only losses they had, 2 3. Soul Gaming, 2 3. And IRK, they won 4 0 as well. So they've been doing an incredibly good job so far uh, this round. And DM, unfortunately not having the same kind of win streak. Uh, they did go 3-2 against Clan Red. 0-4 uh, against Red. Lost 0-4 against RK. BWL, they won 3-2. Psystorm, they won 4-0. And lost 1-3 to Soul Gaming. Uh, now the reason why that's kind of important is this is going to be our rank B match. Uh, going back to the rankings as we always see. We see that DM are very close to the top, but unfortunately unless some miracle happens in terms of DM beating Netwars here, uh, which isn't necessarily a miracle, but uh, they'll have to win their game and IRK and Red will have to lose if they want to make it out of the group with Soul Gaming there in second position. But Soul Gaming, of course, 6 0 in their group so far, so they are guaranteed a spot in the playoffs. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to see how this season is so different, or this round is so different than all of the other rounds. Uh, I mean, obviously, you would always expect Networks to be in at least the top two, top four, because they, they always have been. But uh, for clans like, you know, Red and IRK, I mean, these were kind of the big uh, uh, kind of titans that we saw really emerge last season. So if they don't make it there again, it's like, well, you know, kind of what happened. So I guess we'll get a chance to see at least some of what uh, the top teams look like, because we do have uh, Netwars playing to start things off. But the most important part of any STPL broadcast is what on earth are the crazy maps you're making us play on this week. So for today, we have set one on Icarus, set two, Athena two, set three, Katrina SE, set four, Shin Peaks of Binknu, and set five, the ace match, if we do head there, is going to be on Neo Ground Zero. And just have a look at the matchups we're going to be showing off today. Uh, we're going to start off with the ZBZ between True Touch and Yaj. Uh, that's going to be Poland versus America. Uh, then we're going to have Bonith versus Tech in a PvP. Uh, then we're going to have TVP uh, with Koga and White, uh, White being the clan leader of the M. And then we're going to have Yeti versus PRL, another PvP uh, on St. Pink's of Big Doo, <coughs> which should be kind of cool. Yeti, of course, the highest ranked player. Now, the ranking screen. But the player's a little bit off at the moment. I still need to fix it fully. Uh, but you can see that Yeti has gone 18 for 2. 
the far in the SCPL, which is just insane. And just a quick look to introduce our two players here. True Touch uh, for Netwars going four for one, and Yaj going three for six, unfortunately, in this round. So he's not had the best uh, the best path here. Uh, we can actually have a look at who they beat to get here. And I mean, uh, True Touch is actually 3-0 up against Zerg, beating Jerry, P97, Spire, and Norgrim. So his ZBZ, very, very strong. He also... Uh, faced off against Eon Zerg in the SCPL Christmas Cup, uh, but unfortunately did lose there. I think it was 2-1 or 3-2. It was it was very, very close, nevertheless. And apparently my mic is too low, so I'll turn it up just a little bit. And hopefully uh, that won't blow everyone's ears off. But I mean, just have a look at Yaj's win history as well. He is actually 1-for-1 one one against Zerg. He didn't manage to beat Spire, but did beat, uh, did beat his fellow American Herbmon. Uh, so both of them doing pretty well against Zerg, but obviously through touch with the statistical advantage here as we head in to our first map of today, which is going to be on Icarus. Uh, ZBZ, there's been five of them so far. They've all been pretty good, obviously, depending on the spawn position, you have uh, different options of sort of air play, air rush distances and things like that. So going to be looking forward to get into game number one here. It's True Touch versus Yaj in the STPL round three. Okay, and uh, we're all looking good. Starting us off here in the top middle position, we do have the. Okay, my uh, my game is not timing properly, but uh, the orange Zerg fighting for DM, Yaj. That's right, and his opponent down in the. Uh, well, I guess the, what are what are we calling that these days? Six o'clock location. Uh, this is going to be. I, I never understand why they do this. I, 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 could I? Should I just call him TT the whole game? Kicks. Is that what I should do? Well, I don't know. I mean, either way works. But True Touch, Yanch, Orange, and Brown. Well, the, the, the first time I, the first time I saw, uh, you know, True Touch do this, I was like, I, I thought, hey, you know, he's helping people out who can't really, you know, pronounce his name. I was one of those people uh, initially. But then I actually, uh, you know, I forgot that, and I looked at it, and I thought it was TT1 who just, like, decided to ditch <laughs> the one because he, uh, you know, he decided he wasn't that number anymore. But uh, uh, it is True Touch. Uh, he's uh, one of the best Polish Zergs out there. I mean, next to uh, Eon Zerg, probably those guys are top two, top three Zerg players in the non-Korean scene. So uh, super, super impressive. Had a huge run in uh, BSL5 right up until the finals. Um, uh, six ZVZ to get eliminated, but it was, uh, it was very, very touch and go. So uh, no pun intended there. But I'm excited to see how he does against Yaz, who's obviously been, uh, you know, kind of a, a staple of his own team. Uh, DM just hasn't haven't performed very well this round. Yeah, now, <laughs> how does my microphone sound? Because I noticed a couple of people saying there was a problem with it. It... Uh, you ever watched any movies from like the 1980s kicks? I've seen a lot of movies yeah. from the 80s. Okay, okay. Well, it sounds a little bit like that. Like, you know, technology has come a long way, but here at the STPL, we like to keep our sound equipment uh, made in the same time that StarCraft uh, was released. So uh, I guess that's not quite the 80s, but you get the idea. It does sound a little bit uh, uh, distant. Okay, one second. Oh gosh, what's happening? Yes. I mean, it sounds great to me. Okay, hopefully that sounds a little bit better. I need to replace the audio cable, I think, between my microphone and my PC, so... Ah! I mean, okay, we good. I think so. I mean, in terms of this okay, game, sweet. we've got True Touch going for the earlier lanes. Both of them did do mirror builds, from what I saw. Uh, but we do have some lanes coming in here as well. Now, in fact, uh, Yad went for a quicker hatchery compared to True Touch, which is kind of different to what we normally see True Touch doing. He'll often go into um, 
like an early fall patch, but it is a best of one, so Ooh. maybe playing a little bit better. Yeah, but uh, okay, let's uh, let's not give True Touch too many tiny advantages. He's picking off a couple of links here and there, uh, and, and obviously, you know, with them both having hatcheries, there's not that panic mode that you feel if you're a nine pool player, and of course, many, 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 many Zerg players are. <laughs> uh, then you see that your opponent has a natural expansion. And you're just like, wait a second. You know that means that. You know, I'm the one that has to deal damage, uh, but look at what True Touch is doing as a reaction to this. He is just spamming Lings across the map. He's not saying, oh, hey, we're basically even. Let me just sit back and play, uh, you know, for Mutas. No, he is continuing to be aggressive. He's actually not having the worst trades here. Uh, he does trade out quite a few of those Lings and then run back across the map. But, uh, there's a Sunken Morphing at home or a Colony Morphing at home. So uh, it's not like any of this actually matters until we... Uh, have, uh, uh, you know, Lair Tech come out eventually. Yeah, I mean, Yatch does actually have a lot of links, but there isn't going to be a massive comp game for him to be able to get. Looks like he's going to try and snipe the Sunken. He is going to get it. That's a large Damn. amount of damage. That's one less drone for True Touch there. But now the, the sort of Ling back and forth continue. True Touch now is the one with the Ling advantage. And oh my god, Yatch actually nearly suicides a couple of Lings. There. That's not going to help him. I don't understand how that's possible, Kicks, because, like, theoretically in ZVZ, right, every you know, hashtag Zergling lives matter, right? And so if, if, you, if you're hitting the Sunken as it's morphing, like, I know it loses 100 HP, but, like, uh, losing Zerglings at that point is just so uh, so tenuous. You know, it's a balance on a knife's edge. And now, you, you know, look, at True Touch has, you know, only slightly more Lings. And I don't understand how it worked out quite that evenly. But I, I guess that's really good. And somehow Yaj is just flooding more and more and more across the map. And these Lings just seem to be infinite from Yaj. Yeah, but Yaj really should have gone into the main. Focusing this Sunken is exactly what True Touch wanted him to do. Yeah. The additional links coming in, gonna be trying to take down the sunken as well, but that's not enough damage. And true wow. touch holds an L. Uh, or does he? More links coming through. They're gonna snipe the sunken. They just barely get it. Get one into the main, and I think this is just all. Uh, I, I this is pretty all in from from Yaj. He's yep, certainly no not gonna have hive tech. He is throwing down an in base hatchery as well. Yeah, Yaj really wants to make it. He can't make it happen. The Spire finishes up, and Yaj caps out. GG. Mm. And True Touch. I saw that. The first win. I saw that in base hatchery, and I'm just like, wait a second. This isn't how these games go. Um, but they give him credit for trying. I think when he saw the Spire pop, he's just like, well, you know, this is not going to be my comeback mechanic here. Um, yeah. You know, some some players you do see throw up a bunch of spores and try to play that uh, more like mid to late game kind of Zerg style. It's really hard to do. It barely ever works uh, unless you're Tai 2. He's kind of perfected that art. Uh, but yeah. that, it looked really weird because it looked like Yaj was a about to tip the scale. He took out the sunken once. He got it again. And he almost had a critical number of lings. Just couldn't quite uh, match the timing that uh, True Touch was able to put out there. So that puts him up 1-0 in this season. It does. And it puts Netwalls up who, tenu who are in a very tenuous position of making it into the playoffs a little bit closer. That's going to take us into game number two when we get back after this.